So the creepy kid on my bus. So I've been stalking this sub for a little bit now, and decided to post my own little story. I'd just like to say before we start that, I'm a sophomore in high school, and I go to a public school, which also means I ride a bus with the same people every single day. Now that we have that out of the way, let's begin. Last year, I got separated from my two best friends, and was put onto a new bus route. Compared to the amount of people that were on the bus, I rode in 8th grade. This one was particularly empty. There were only about three high schoolers, including me, and around five or so middle schoolers. Everything was going great, until I decided to venture to the back of the bus. I was, and still am, a very anxious and antisocial person, so that was a big step for me to take. As the ride continues and everyone gets onto the bus, everything is perfect until our last stop. Let's call this kid Weasel. Weasel was also in high school. He didn't say much until about a week into school. He would start asking us questions. They weren't all that weird at first. They started out as questions such as, What's your favorite color? Or who do you look up to? Flash forward to the start of summer sports season. Weasel and I didn't get along at all, due to how weird he had become. He had started cracking homophobic and racist jokes, claimed he was a Nazi, wanted to murder all women like Hitler would with the Jews, given us all vulgar nicknames, threatened my life, and his questions have become more and more personal and offensive. As people on the bus started joining sports, Weasel and I were the only high schoolers on the bus leaving me alone with him for about 20 minutes until the middle schoolers were released. He would often twitch violently, say my name over and over, grunt, move seats to get closer to me, etc. Within a week of enduring this, I was scared shitless of him. I ended up sitting up front for the rest of the year until the middle schoolers got on. Flash forward to present day, I found out that his brother that lit a public bathroom on fire that has a history of anger issues will be joining us on the bus. Luckily, the bus driver puts middle schoolers up to the front of the bus. Unluckily, though, Weasel... Weasel only talks about his brother, asks those offensive questions, threatens me and my friends, and spews homophobic and racist slurs. On the first day of school ten days ago, he threw my earbuds out of the window, cut out a chunk of my hair, and brought a dead raccoon on the bus. I'm terrified that this kid will try to hurt me and my friends, and I don't know what to do. So Weasel, let's not meet, even though I'll have to every day until my best friend gets his license in December. Creepy kid grabs my... I was about 15 years old when this happened. Year 2010, I think that was. Also, English is not my first language. So, it was around 6 or maybe 7 in the evening, and that's quite dark already in the Philippines, leaving you with only streetlights and dim shadows being cast from the lights inside the houses. Plus, there's this one particular street in our area, which is so narrow and two consecutive streetlights are not working, so if you walk there, you'd have to walk for a good 1 or 2 minutes in complete darkness. Except again for the faint light coming from inside the houses. Enough with the intro, that one night, I was asked to run some errands, like buy something because there were visitors in the house. I was given P500, which is a pretty large amount for a 15 year old to have in that time. P500 is around $10. $10. And also that time, I recently got a new phone, which I was so overtly fascinated about. So when I went out, I brought my phone with me. In our place, robbery is not really a thing, so it wasn't a big deal, but all in all, when I started walking along the aforementioned dark street, I got a bit nervous. I reached the store with no incident, but the thing I was told to buy wasn't available, so I went back immediately. When I was nearing the spot with no working street light, I saw a silhouette of a small kid, leaning, facing towards a wall. Peeing in the streets is pretty common here, so I thought he was doing just that. Although what I find creepy was, why... Why is that specific spot with no lights? I, I shrugged it off and just continued walking. The nearer I got, the more I became aware of the fact that I was holding my new phone plus a P500 bill. Even so, I just calmly walked and just held the money and my phone tightly pressed together between my hands. 
when I passed by the kid. I got away for a good two to three meters when he suddenly jumped at me and behind my back and hugged me, locking both my arms to my side so I could not move. The first thing on my mind was to secure the money in my phone. He then tried to put his hand in front of me and he grabbed my V word. Yes, you read that right. My private female part. He tried to grab it. But since my hands were in front of me, locked together, secure my phone and money, it was kind of making it hard for him to do just that. So he just managed to brush it off with his hands. When he realized he can't do it, he resorted to grabbing my boobs instead. I wasn't able to stop him as it all happened too, too fast. And my mind was just a little too preoccupied with protecting my possessions at that time that by the time I realized what was happening, he was already sprinting off towards the opposite direction where I came from. I stood shocked for less than a minute. Then I, too, ran back home. I don't think of telling my mom about it. I mean, he was a kid. A couple of inches shorter than me, around 10 to 12 years old, I think. Nonetheless, creepy kid, let's not meet. To the kid in my gym class, posting on Throwaway, because I don't want this stuff linked to my actual account. Context, I'm 15 to 16 years old white dude straight. The other guy is also 15 to 16 year old Hispanic dude. Not too sure if straight or gay. The story starts beginning of the school year 2017 sophomore year. Gym class rolls in and a kid I know picks a locker really close to me. I don't mind because I thought he was chill and stuff. However, more and more I notice him peering at me while I'm changing. Now, I know it's all fun and stuff to be bros and joke about bodies and stuff, so I don't mind at all. Until the peering becomes not only constant, but more and more obvious. To the point where he's literally watching me while he gets dressed the whole time. I haven't taken any action because I thought, well, maybe he's just socially awkward or gay or something. So I don't want to just frame him as a creep. So I go minding my own business and do nothing about it. The swim unit comes and we start doing laps and stuff. However... I notice that he diverges from the rest and try to swim closer to me. I get into a conversation with him, and he's acting normal now. But then he gets too close to me and starts touching me with his leg under the water. I'm like, that's really strange, and I back off a bit. A couple more days of this pass by, and one time during some back and forth swimming routines, he literally gets way too close to comfort when there is plenty of space elsewhere. I then tell him, hey dude, do you mind? Sort of loan some space here. And he doesn't say anything and moves away a tiny bit, but not too, too much. Still really creeping me the hell out. But hey, maybe socially awkward or gay still? I go back to my locker after routine is over and start to change. But then once again, he starts staring at me creepily. That's when I decided to change my locker to a diagonally facing section locker. In the back, where he can barely see me. After I changed the locker, things got significantly better. He's not peering as often. I do sometimes catch him by meeting eye contact until he looks away. However, now during gym, this kid is actively trying to move closer to me, even squeezing through the class to get closer to me, and you see, I would be fine with this, but he always tries to get in front of me where I can see him, or really close behind me where it gets creepy. So I try to surround myself with some friends and see if that will make him stop, but no, somehow he still manages. He also comes out of the lockers right after I do which signifies that he's probably waiting for me. I decide to run another test to be sure he's just trying not to be friendly. Outside, while waiting for everyone to change your gym clothes to normal clothes to continue class, I decide to leave earlier before the gym teacher comes and see if he follows. He never leaves early, but sure enough, when I started to leave, I noticed him following in the reflection. So I started to run and I shook him off and returned to gym class to wait. He never returned. And he definitely was following me, because there is no way that he took those exact same turns and everything. Fast forward another couple of days of me doing the exact same thing I do to one more time, last test. If this works, then he is definitely a creep. My plan was to change fast and run into the gym before anyone else and climb all the way up to the folded bleachers. Basically having a bird's eye view of him coming, coming through the entrance without him seeing me. So I try the plan, I get ready, change really fast, sprint up the stairs and climb those bleachers really high. 
Five seconds later, he walks through the door, doesn't see me, almost right above him. He says some words I feared. Where the hell is he? I shudder, but I stay quiet. He then exits, but I decided to wait. He decides to try another entrance, and then spots me on the bleachers, and then realizes that I was there the whole time. We lock eye contact and his eyes were very cold. He then slowly walks away to where the class starts, and I stay up there for a, for a while, until other people start gathering in. I tried one more time, but he didn't fall for it. He came out with the rest of the guys for once. He still follows me during class, and I try my hardest to shake him off. I am planning to confront him about it, but I really don't want to. He still peeks at me as he passes by in the locker rooms, and now I change really fast as to get away and not getting him the pleasure of looking at me. Yeah, freaky. He's also in a couple of my other classes too. Do things like bump into me or walk real close to me or just glance at me. But since those classes are more crowded, it's a bit safer. But it's almost a new year, so yeah. If you're reading this, kid, stop. I really don't want to be rude, but just fucking stop. It's so damn annoying and creepy. Thanks for reading. Kids don't carry cash. Canadian, female. When I was 14 years old, my family went on a camping trip. The group consisted of my parents, grandparents, my 12-year-old sister, and my 7-year-old cousin. My cousin was getting pretty bored of campfires, as a kid does, so we decided to walk to a park a couple streets over. We were parked in a campground, as opposed to out in the woods, so this park was accessible, and in the sight of the majority of campers. It was a good 5 minute walk from our site though, far enough away that my parents wouldn't be able to hear or really see anything that was going on. We sat on the swings for maybe 5 or 10 minutes before a girl around my age walked over. I saw her coming because her tent was directly across from the park. She sat on the swing beside me and started talking, asking me where we were camped, how long we'll be here for, what music I like, etc. She kept her head down the whole time, making eye contact maybe three times. She seemed distracted and possibly upset, so I smiled and tried to make friends. Unfortunately, that wasn't her plan. About ten minutes into our conversations, she said goodbye and headed back to her tent. Not two minutes passed before a man in his mid-thirties stepped out after her and proceeded to walk towards me with a huge grin on his face. He must have been her brother. My first reaction was to assume he was mentally handicapped. Why would an older man be smiling at me so, so excitedly? I gave him a small smile and tried to look away, but he was barreling down the street towards me, refusing to break eye contact. When he reached me, he said hey, and asked me how old I was, what my name was, etc. I stayed, sitting in my swing, responding politely as a naive 14-year-old would, as my sister and cousin stared at him. They were obviously freaked out but didn't know what to do. He then asked if I liked Justin Bieber, even though I wanted to support our fellow Canuck artist, I said no. He then asked me if I liked One Direction, I said they were okay. What Makes You Beautiful had just been released and I had genuinely enjoyed it, which I had talked about with who I assumed was his sister. He asked me if I wanted tickets, at this point, my sister and cousin, although being so young, knew something bad was happening. They took off sprinting towards our trailer, and I started standing up, getting ready to leave as well. I told him I didn't want tickets, I felt squeamish, I, as I had a feeling he wasn't asking for money. As a 14 year old who looked 11, it was obvious that I didn't carry cash at all and there was no way in hell he wanted me to go ask my parents for some. He persisted, listing Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Bruno Mars, etc. I started walking away at this point and told him no, that I, I wasn't interested. I got scared that he was going to follow me, but thankfully he didn't. And I was able to walk home at a normal pace. When I got there, my cousin was crying while my sister was trying to explain what in the world was going on. I tried to calm him down and told everyone what happened. Again, as a naive child, I started pushing down my feelings of danger and instead forced myself to believe that he was simply selling concert tickets. Thankfully, my mother is quite strong-headed and saw through it. She made me point out the campsite, dragging me with her, walked up to the family and gave them shit 
I was embarrassed at the time, but thank God my mom is as confident and as tough as she is. I'll never know what exactly he wanted from me. I'll never know what he did to that little girl to turn her into a scout for a sick scam. But I'm glad that I had the paranoid, ballsy family that I do to protect me. Who knows what would have happened if I didn't. The Rat Boy When I was in elementary school, there was this temperamental boy in my same year. His name was Paul. As a child, I was one of the few kids who actively felt sorry for him. My mom, who worked as an admin at the school, described his home life as chaotic. His dad was rarely ever around, and his parents separated when he was a baby. Our school's curriculum was based on Waldorf principles, often requiring us to study art and music-related subjects. Violin was part of that, which was obligatory. I remember it being very muggy and hot outside, while everyone was waiting to enter the classroom with our cases in hand. At the time, I was probably eight years old, but someone in line had told me Paul was in the detention for a tantrum. Like a jaguar, he burst through the door from down the hall. He was being held with a teacher who had tried to calm him down, but there was a miscommunication that he would not be given lunch, so he panicked, my mom said. No, he screamed, running past her and another woman who worked in the office. The two of them ran after him as he made it past the parking lot, turning a corner until my mom tackled him to the ground. All of us stood in pure horror as he kicked her shins and almost bit her, screaming various obscenities that even she was shocked by. He was possessed with fiery anger as he continued to howl in her arms. None of us dared to upset him as the months followed. He became more and more despondent until the year finally came to a close. But around Christmas time, his spirit seemed to have changed. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, at least from people I've asked around my age, there was an educational program that would come to schools in a van. They would bring in various animals for us to learn about. It was one of my favorite days, and after that, we were asked to bring in a pet for show and tell. Paul decided he was going to bring his pet rat. He told us he had saved it from a storm drain, but he rarely touched it. When he brought it in, it stopped me in my tracks. It doesn't look very nice. I didn't move and crossed my arms as it hissed in its cage. It's not supposed to be nice. Go on and touch it, he told me. His hands fidgeted in his seat and he stared at the rat then back at me, but I refused. My feet were lead, and I watched it continue to pace frantically. He asked me to touch it again. I, I said no. He screamed and flew up from his chair running at me. I stuck my right foot back to keep me grounded, but struggled to keep my footing. He was a very stout kid, and had no problem grabbing my right wrist. Get away from her, the teacher yelled at Paul, but it was too late. He pushed my finger into the rat's den, and it bit into the pad of my index. He dropped me and I fell to the knees, crying. I watched the blood drip slowly down my hand, and I was brought to the nurse. Not long after that, my mom came in to see me with a bandaged hand. I said I thought I looked tough. By the time the fourth grade started, he was taken out of school, and I don't know what happened to him. But the expression on his face the day he watched me stand in front of that cage is something I will never forget. It reminded me of Norman Bates, sitting in the courthouse. The final dialogue of his mother's voice in his head, saying, I'm not even going to swat that fly. I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know. And they'll say why. She wouldn't even harm a fly. Psycho five-year-old So I don't even remember this till just reading another story on here and it came screaming back I used to babysit a lot of kids. I love kids. So I started nannying a bit on and off But I seemed to have the worst luck at picking families The creepy dad who's all of a sudden staying home a lot The crazy mother who fired me on a voicemail over a lie her kid told 
and didn't bother talking about it. The stripper who ended up having me stay seven nights a week and saw her kid a lot less than I did. But this one was the worst, and I only lasted four days. The family responded to a Kijiji ad I placed for babysitting. They needed me for a month to help transition, as the father, who had recovered from cancer, was returning to work, and if it worked out, could go full-time. When I went to meet them, they seemed like a super nice family. I had a great report with both the mom and the dad. There were two boys, three and five, seemed nice, the younger was shy and adorable. The older seemed like a high energy. Look at me, little boy, I was wrong. I accepted happily. It was just me and the younger for a couple hours. While the older was at school, he was in kindergarten, and then I'd spend the afternoon with both of them. They were good at first. I loved the younger, he was shy but warmed up quickly. We would do crafts and play games, we had a blast. Then the older boy, Noah. Noah had that I'm the older brother, I'm in charge, don't pay attention to him, look at me attitude. Normal, I'm used to that, it happens. But he also got frustrated really, really easily. Like the glitter isn't cooperating, I'm gonna slam my fist and get angry. Life is ending frustration. So I realized I had to be calm. No, it's okay around him, but he still overreact. The parents had gotten this kit where you could design your cookies and melt and freeze chocolate in molds. It was a little fun idea, but Noah didn't want his younger brother interfering. And so quite quickly he got angry and said something rude or whatever. So I sent him to his room upstairs. This did not go well. He just comes right out, sits at the top of the stairs. So I go back up saying, no, you stay in your room for a bit, you're not listening. I close the door and he just opens it. Realizing I'm right there, this isn't working. He starts screaming bloody murder and throws his toy box. I go in frustrated, this is supposed to be a usual punishment. And I know he's testing me and is pissed off. I'm not, I'm not just letting him get away with it. Turns out he broke the box. And he goes into tear, his dad's gonna be mad, he's so sorry, we can't fix it. I end up fixing it well enough. It's fine, whatever, it's okay. Don't throw things next time, just take a breath. I calm him down after a bit, and he apologizes. And after our talk, I'm not gonna make him stay up here. So he's fine, but this continues every time he gets into trouble. It's a huge ordeal, and it bounces between screaming and just ignoring my stay in your room order. I have no idea what he got in trouble over. But maybe the third time, I had to make him go to his room. He would not cooperate. I was getting so frustrated and didn't even know what to do. He kept coming out of his room and screaming at me. I remember being on the stairs, and he realized this screaming wasn't working. So he upped it and started yelling that he was going to bang his head against the wall and other things to hurt himself. It was out of nowhere. I don't know where a five-year-old gets this idea. But he's halfway down the stairs and starts banging his head against the wall. I had to run down and grab him and stop him. He ran away and was fighting me and screaming and uncontrollable. Now, Anoda had been talking to the mom about his outburst, and she said he was in counseling, but they didn't have a good doctor. So she wasn't super helpful, more just, yeah, this, this happens. But at this point, it was a horrible meltdown. I didn't know what to do. I was scared he'd hurt himself. I had to text her and be like, what do I do? And she told me I had to grab him and just hold him tight till he calmed down. I know this is a good technique. I've heard it before for people with mental illnesses and disabilities. Pressures across the body can produce hormones and calm people down sort of thing. So I chased this kid down and grabbed him in a bear hug with his feet off the ground while he fought back till he finally calmed down. He talked on the phone with his mom and he calmed down and sat with me on the couch for, for the rest of the night. With his poor younger brother, yeah. For, don't forget, there's another little guy who just kind of sits in the background, not sure what's happening. So now I'm understanding this kid has major issues. This is going to be tough, but I don't want to give up. This family went through a lot, and they're nice. I love my mornings with a younger, easy child. So when the mom checks in, if I'm still good, I say yes. She then asks me not to tell the father, um, what? Does he not know his child has issues? Whatever your deal. Next day, another morning, I'm okay with staying, but soon Noah is home, and we're having another meltdown. It's escalating, though. I am filled with dread as he screams, I'm gonna cut your head off! I don't know where this is coming from. This kid is five years old. He continues with these threats about stabbing me and hurting me and himself, and I'm getting scared of a child. 
One meltdown, I'm chasing after him as he thinks, it's a game and it's funny, and he runs to the kitchen. I hear him move a chair and he tells me he's getting a knife to cut my head off. I've never been more afraid the world stopped for a second. I had to grab him and hide the fucking knives on top of the stove. Later he grabbed his scissors, those funny border scissors, so no point but seriously come on, and says he's gonna stab himself and make motions at his stomach and cut my head off with them and runs after me. This would all be over something stupid if I told him we're not doing that maybe later or let's do something else now. He would go from sweet kid doing crafts to psychopath kid trying to grab the knives in seconds. I felt absolute dread when I saw this kid. When I got home, I couldn't bear the thought of going back. I still lived at home. So I told my mom what happened and she told me what, what I knew, that I couldn't go back. I need her to push me through. I didn't want to leave him hanging. So I offered to finish a week and thank God, they said no, don't bother. The dad was pissed. I up and quit because he had no idea his child was off the hinges. I didn't care though, that child still gave me nightmares. I was terrified. I even brought a friend to go pick up my check. I don't know what was up with that child. He clearly had issues and they need to push harder if they didn't like the counselor because he's headed on a bad path if he doesn't get help guaranteed. I worry about the younger brother. I worry for any unsuspecting babysitter like me. When they don't disclose, their child is difficult to handle. It's been a couple years, and I wonder what happened to them. I hope I never see him again, although I wonder if he's not getting help and acting out that much at five years old, if he won't end up on the news. My Cousin the Sadist I grew up in Long Beach, California, from the ages of 2 to 11. There was a lot of us near living near each other. I had two older sisters, and my next door neighbors were my cousins, five of them. We'll be focusing on the oldest of those cousins. His name was Christian, and he was one of the most sadistic people I've ever met. He enjoyed wrecking my Lego towers giving me wedgies until I bled, putting a pillow on my face and sitting on it. He even used my head like a step stool once. I was too young to properly defend myself. I had a stuffed animal, a Dalmatian that I named Dale. Christian took Dale and put him in the oven and duct taped me to a chair with the oven light on in front of me, so I could do nothing but watch as Dale, my best friend, burned alive, at least in my child mind. Needless to say, Christian was a fucked up individual, but I knew something was wrong when I saw him with our cat, Precious. He would use Precious's tail as a handle and swing her around, sometimes throwing her at the couch, but sometimes throwing her at the wall. He laughed especially hard when he heard the sharp little thud. She died. My parents told me that she ran away, but I knew they were lying. It didn't occur to me until years later, but eventually I understood the truth. One night, my sisters had all our cousins over, and they wanted to play with an Ouija board. I was a little frightened, so I stepped out into our backyard away from the Ouija board. Christian followed me outside and walked up behind me. He pressed a knife to my throat, serrated from the kitchen. He was whispering things like, What would you do if I killed you? I'm going to cut your neck and bleed you out. Why are you crying? By this time I was hysterical. I was a nine-year-old boy sobbing and pleading for my life before my sister came out and asked why I was crying so loud. Christian put the knife down so she couldn't see. I remember running to her, clenching her like she was my savior for all I knew she really was. Christian tried to lie, telling her that I was being a baby about the Ouija board, but I, I was so terrified and hysterical that I screamed that he was lying. I told her he put a knife at my neck. She held me and took me inside, calling my parents. When they came home, everything was away, and everyone was gone except for my sisters and me. I was still coming down from the terror. Christian was ordered by my uncle Gene to never come near me again. It worked. They moved a few months later, and in that time, I only saw Christian at family outings, and he would never talk to me. I kept within arm's length of anyone who was safe when he was around. My dad brought me to the bathroom. My mom's left hand was devoted to holding my right. He never got the opportunity to catch me alone. Now that we're all adults, we all have a social media account. 
Christian tries to add me on Facebook and my other social media outlets, but I block him. And a few months later, another one of his accounts will try to add me. For what it's worth, I hope to never see him again at another family gathering. Not likely since he was disowned by Uncle Gene a few years later. So to the cousin that traumatized me as a child, do me a favor. Let's not meet. Teenager tries to abduct my cousins. Alright, so first I want to thank all who are interested in this story for reading it. And I want to make a note that the beginnings of the story were my little cousin's point of view, and descriptions were from him and his stepbrother, so shall, shall we begin? I also apologize for my bad storytelling. I've never written about myself before, thus never writing in first person. First, a little details about myself and my cousin. I am a 14-year-old girl, during this story and currently, and taller than the average girl at my age. I won't give away my name, but my cousins told me that I could give away theirs. My youngest cousin was and still is 9 years old in the story, and my older cousin was 12, he is 13 now. The events of this story happened a year ago, but thinking back on it now, I realized that it was far more creepier than I thought at the time. My grandparents lived in a very populated area, lots of houses and narrow driveways. There's an alleyway down to the side of a bunch of houses that leads to a park which, funnily enough, is almost never occupied. Down near the park, there are many houses too, which I find odd because, like I said, no one ever goes into the park. It's not a bad park, rather small, with four swings, one slide, and a bunch of boulders for climbing on. Me and my youngest cousin usually just play on our laptops, but my older cousin doesn't have one. And that's where the story begins. One day we're playing on our laptops, and the door to our grandparents' house opens, my older cousin coming in with a pile of toy guns, screaming random words in Russian that he learned from his Call of Duty games or whatever. Half an hour later, he's getting restless because me and Jay, my youngest cousin's nickname, were refusing to come off of our laptops. But Jay eventually felt bad and gave in. They were being so noisy, and I remember being really annoyed, so I suggested that they go to the park, to which they thought was a great idea. They left soon after, putting their shoes on and grabbing one gun each, until I re-enter the picture. The rest of this is my cousins telling. They told me how, in the park, and one of the boys who lived around the area was throwing stones at them, causing them to be agitated and run to the park instead of walking. When they got there, it was empty as per usual, and they decided to sit on the swings and let the breeze swing them. Jay remembers seeing a boy around the ages of 17 to 18 years old, hanging around the small driveway at the bottom of the park and just staring at them. My older cousin Ryan, told me about how the boy finally had the courage to come over to the swings and asked, Can I play with you both? They agreed, but then told him about only having two guns with them currently, and then they offered to head back to the house and grab another one. The older boy responded with things like, That's okay, I can just be a background character, and I have no problem watching you both play on your own. Jay actually got off his swing and told the boy, who will call Greg, that he was going to grab a gun for him because he didn't want the boy to feel left out. Greg's protest got louder. No, I don't need one, honest, and don't go away. I just want to play. Ryan then got bad vibes from the boy and leaned over to Jay, telling him that he got bad vibes from Greg and told him that he just say he needs to go to the bathroom and get me. Jay immediately went into acting mode and began making noises of protests telling Greg that he really had to go to the bathroom and that he'd be right back. Ryan told me one of the creepiest things Greg could have said that day was, My house has three bathrooms. Would you like to head back to my place? I have an Xbox and lots of guns too. In fact, my house isn't too far away from me. Jay got freaked out when the older boy actually grabbed his hand and began dragging him down the pavement, but didn't really get more than two steps before Jay said he'd feel comfortable going to his own bathroom. Greg let his hand go and watched him run up the alleyway, 
and struck up a conversation with Ryan instead. Ryan said that he would ask stuff like, what number is your house? And after telling him that he was staying at his grandparents' house for the night, he began asking stuff like, will they be home tonight? Are there any more of your brothers staying with you? Ryan told him that I was staying too, and recalled how the boy went quiet before finally changing the conversation to something else. Jay barged through the house's door and grabbed my arm before dragging me outside without a word. I asked him what was wrong, and he told me that a boy wanted to play with him and then tried to drag him to his house. I released my arm from his hand and we both booked it down the alleyway because there was no way we were going to leave Ryan down there alone with him. As we came to the entrance to the park, Greg and Ryan both looked up at me. Ryan in relief and Greg in anger. You told me that you were going to the bathroom, you fucking liar! Greg began shouting at Jay, who was right next to me. The older boy didn't really step forward though, just began shouting from a distance. I was actually worried about Ryan at this point, because Greg was literally directly in front of him, but he didn't appear to have any malice towards Ryan. That was when Greg actually stepped forwards and then again, and then again, until he was directly in front of us both. He grabbed Jay's arm and yanked hard, and that's when I swung at him. I caught him on the cheek, and it threw his head back, also making him let go of Jay. Greg became screaming profanities at us both, and insisted that he would play with Ryan and Jay, and maybe, maybe even myself. I felt violated even being in his presence, and told him to never come near us again. He left, but that was not the end of Greg, no. He had one more appearance, possibly the creepiest one in that day. It was late into the night, and I couldn't get to sleep. I was far too tall for the pull-up bed in the living room, and my feet hung off the edge of it. My cousins were chilling upstairs. It was probably 11 p.m. Suddenly, I got the feeling of being watched and look outside the large window, but see nothing. I shrugged it off at the time and got up to go to the kitchen and grab a glass of milk. And that's when I heard it. There was heavy breathing. I turned around, but nobody was in the kitchen with me, yet their breathing persisted. I was heading back to the living room when I saw it. The males thought that the door was being pushed up by three fingers that could visibly be seen from the inside of the house. I freaked the fuck out and stood still, and soon the breathing stopped, but the fingers were still holding it open. I then heard someone mutter the words, We can all play tomorrow. I'll be waiting. I didn't get to sleep that night. The morning rolled around and I stopped Jay and Ryan from going beyond the front door. We stayed inside all day, occasionally watching Greg walk past in the front garden. Sometimes he would be smiling, others he would be glaring at us. Once, he actually walked past with a toy gun, giving us a smug look. We still see him from the street, so I presume he lives there. I can't call the cops though, because we have no evidence he did anything like this, and they probably just brush it off. Jay, Ryan, and I still have no clue why. He suddenly went quiet about the topic for, of an older girl staying with them, or how the hell he found the house you were staying at, since he went the opposite way. We have no clue about a lot of things about this guy, especially why a 17 or 18 year old guy would try to abduct kids younger than 15. His intentions may have seemed good at the start, but grabbing my cousin was a major red flag, and I'm glad Ryan thought the situation through calmly. So, creepy teenager who tried to take my cousins to his house, talked to me, and possibly watch me through the mail slot and the living room window, let's not meet, or more specifically, let's not ever talk again. Ever. The neighbor kid is a psycho. 13 to 14 years ago, when I was around 12 or 13, my family had a gathering at my grandma's house, which we did very often back then. My brother, cousins, both boys, and I, a girl, were playing in the inflatable pools in the backyard. The neighbor kid, probably my brother's age, 15 or 16, climbed his fence so he could talk to us. We were having fun, joking and chatting with him, so he asked if he'd like to join us. My grandma gave the okay and he came over to partake in the festivities. Everything was great until my cousins and brother went inside to help with something. I got nervous when they left, 
but I'm a socially anxious person who is especially nervous around guys, so I pushed it aside. Suddenly, the cool kid from next door became a jerk. He started hurling insults at me while grinning. I figured he was just playing around, so I did it back. We started splashing each other, but then he got super aggressive. He was splashing me so much, I kept taking in water. I turned my head away and told him to slow down, still kind of laughing. When he didn't stop, I got serious and told him to knock it off. I was clearing my eyes of water when he grabbed the bucket. He filled it with water and put the bucket on my head. I wanted to take it off, but he shoved me down. I got the bucket off and asked what's wrong with him. He just grabbed me and shoved my head underwater. I was flailing, searching for his face to scratch or hit, but the angle he was at made it impossible. I got dangerously close to passing out when he pulled off of me. I came up gasping for air, and my brother pulled me behind him and asked the kid what in the hell he was doing. The little douche snickered and said we were just playing around. My brother stepped forward and asked, Ow, trying to drown me is playing. The kid kept smirking, and my brother told him he needs to stay away from us. The kid scoffed and angrily said, You guys are boring anyways, and was escorted out by my siblings. We never said anything to the adults, for reasons I can't understand. He even brought one of his friends to mock us and insult us, which resulted in us telling our family, so that stopped real quick. He tried to call us liars, but wasn't believed. Shortly after that, the family moved and we never dealt with him again. I am very grateful for my brother who essentially raised me. He's helped me in more ways than I can count. I don't know where I'd be without him.